Um, so I'll now go to what is the publication effectivity sheet for me. Now, I can, as you can see, there are two publication effectivity sheet. One is from November to July, 2021. And then the next one is November, 2021 to July, 2022. So because the next exam would be this one, you have to click on this. Now API, in my opinion, made a mistake. They have to remove this because it, it creates confusion. So look at this time slot, uh, the dates, and then use the correct one. Here, if you're attending the next exam, it would be November 2021 to July 22. It would be this one. So let's pick this up. As you can see here, this would be the list of reference material that study material that you have to do it would be API 571. And it would be these topics from API, these sections from API 571, terms, definition, atmospheric brittle fracture, caustic corrosion, corrosion under insulation, MIC and et cetera. And then inspection of atmospheric and low pressure storage tanks, and then you have the edition. So make sure that you are using the right edition. Now the red marks here, color, means that there was a revision from, uh, change of revision from the previous version. So they keep on revising this on an annual basis, okay? Um, I would suggest that you study 575, um, inspection of uh, storage tanks we, in conjunction with API 653 here, uh, the code, okay, for the standard. Uh, the standard or the code is, is actually mandatory. So it actually tells you do's and don'ts. And uh, the practice actually tells you the methods or the guideline, how you do the inspection. Uh, and then 577, welding inspection and metallurgy. I would suggest that you read this with conjunction with uh, ASME section nine, because section nine is about building procedure, builder qualification, PQR, WPS, and then 577 is about the building inspection. Um, API 650 is actually the construction code or the construction standard. And 653 is the um, uh, inspection, re uh, tank inspection, repair, and reconstruction or maintenance side of it. So these three, 576, 650, 653, should be read in conjunction. And then you have two documents, which is fairly large, 651 and 652, cathodic protection and lining, that you will have around 10 questions out of it. And then lastly, you will have ASME section five, non-destructive examination. Now section five would tell you about the NDT procedures, how it's done. And then what is the body of knowledge? So body of knowledge is practically tell you what they expect from you here, okay? Uh, to know as a API 653 inspector. Uh, so for example, you should be able to uh, know about the corrosion rate and inspection interval. You should be able to calculate that. Um, and what I suggest the tricky here is uh, look at these numbers here, say API 653 section four. So this is like doubly important uh, than others. And then they put the publication effectivity without any revision number here. Okay, and the ASME codes that you should know. And then um, they brought examples like corrosion and inspection interval, you should know what you should calculate, which formula you should use. These are all, if there is any calculation, it would be a open book. But then you should know how to navigate through them and know what you should look at. Joint efficiencies, maximum field height during hydrostatic testing, again, this formula, you should know where to find it. You don't need to memorize them. Well size for shell and openings, settlement evaluation, and impact testing. Uh, and then as you go along corroded area, how you do select the 
average thickness, averaging, the pitting, how you should consider it, uh, bottom plate minimum thickness. So these are more uh, potential exam questions. And then it would tell you what you should not, you do, need not study, you know, code calculations and all that. Um, and then welding on atmospheric, on so ASME section nine, um, so WPS, you should know the basic of WPS, PQR, WPQ, um, belt procedure review. So it would be a very simple procedure and a single process, belt process. Uh, and these are excluded, dissimilar base metal joints. And all. It wouldn't be anything complicated on WPS end. And, uh, and then the all important uh, 650 and 653. Um, construction code and in maintenance and inspection codes for the standards. And then non-destructive examination, what you need to study brought here, uh, general requirements, radiographic, and etc. cetera. Um, and then there would be a practical knowledge. So the practical knowledge is part of the closed book. So that means a day-to-day -day knowledge that you should know. And uh, you don't need to, you are not expected to refer uh, normally, you know, to the codes and the standards and recommended practices. So this is what you see on a day-to-day -day basis. And then what you should you need not to study is all here, say thickness calculation and all that uh, for uh, a wind, earthquake, or etc. So these are engineering issues, and uh, these are excluded. Say these annexes, and then. Those are general ones, and then a specific knowledge, what you should know from each reference codes or a recommended practices, it would tell you uh, by, say, here, safety relief valve, inspection of pressure, living devices, etc. cetera. 